Hey guys, it's Kevin Davis from Detailers Helper, and today I want to talk to you about knowing your numbers. I had one of those, uh, let's call it discussions on Facebook the other day about uh, numbers, about profit, about um, just gross, that kind of stuff. And the discussion centered around someone that was sort of, it ended up really being sort of a pissing contest, but the guy was talking through and saying, well, I make X number of dollars per interior. I, I commonly bill this amount, commonly bill doing uh, this amount. And it was all about Groupon and and uh, how that works for different businesses, and which I'm not a huge fan of. That's a whole other video. But I was trying to get the guy to explain to me what your profit is, what your cost are uh, costs are per detail. Uh, how much are you really making? What are you what are you netting from that? Because if you don't know your numbers, you basically don't know anything. Because it doesn't really matter what the gross number is if you're not making any profit. And so, uh, and we've talked about hourly rates, we've talked about pricing, that kind of thing. So this goes back uh, onto that sort of topic. So if you haven't seen those videos, go back and look at them. Uh, I would encourage you to subscribe also so you can sort of keep up uh, with what videos that we put out there. But uh, to my point, I was just reading an article about Elon Musk and Tesla, and in Q1 of this year, they sold a record, almost 11,000 individual cars. They Put them out there between 85 and 125 grand, somewhere in there. They lost 154 million dollars uh, in in the first quarter of this year. Now, obviously, he's pumping in VC capital, investing. He's building this business. The auto industry is a much different animal than what we're talking about with a small business, especially a small detailing business. But the point remains. It doesn't matter if you say that you sold 10,000 units if you lost $154 million. Just like it doesn't matter if you say my average detailing ticket is $600 if your cost on that detailing ticket is $500 which and takes 10 hours. So you're making 10 bucks an hour. That doesn't matter. So the only way to really know what you're doing and to know whether or not you're being successful, whether or not your numbers make sense, whether or not your margins are right there uh, and your costs are being controlled is to really get down to the nitty gritty of looking at your numbers. So I want to keep this as brief as possible, give you some different ideas on some things that you want to look through. Uh, but basically what we want to do is we want to look at uh, different aspects of the cost. So you've got variable costs, you've got fixed costs for each detail, uh, and they sort of need to be broken down from the bigger picture down to the individual detail and down to the individual process. I would encourage you to get as specific as you possibly can. It does take time, it does take a little bit of practice, and of course it takes data. Uh, so uh, at the very least, get a broad sweep across all of your business stuff and get an idea of what this stuff is costing you. So let's look at the fixed cost. You've got insurance, which you've already talked about, that if you're running this professionally and you don't have insurance, stop the video, go do that right now. You need insurance. You've got you know any of your utilities. If you're working out of a shop, if you're doing mobile, you've got um, stuff like uh, your, sorry, uh, stuff like your fuel costs, trailers, insurance, uh, vehicle insurance, uh, tires, uh, maintenance, any of that kind of stuff. If you're mobile, the same thing would apply, obviously, if you're doing mobile and shop-related stuff. If you're doing shop, you've got your utilities, your your rent, uh, your mortgage payment, your interest, uh, all of that kind of stuff. And so there's this huge thing of fixed costs, which isn't really broken down individually by the number of details you do. That number may or may not stay the same. Obviously, if you're doing uh, you know, electrical, if you're doing a thousand details a month versus a hundred, your electrical bills, your water bills, uh, your heating bills, all that stuff are gonna be variable a little bit based on that, but um, effectively they're uh, fixed costs. Then you have variable costs. Fix other fixed costs would be including stuff like equipment, um, equipment maintenance, new equipment, uh, carts, belts, aprons, extractors, pressure washers, um, all of that kind of stuff is going to be part of your uh, cost there as well. So for variable costs, you're going to be looking at stuff that are more consumable, stuff like uh, you know polishes and cleaners and uh, washes and, and even towels are consumable those kind of things. So you need to look at those individually uh, instead of looking them, looking at them as a fixed cost. So let's talk about how you get these numbers so you can get them broken down. So from a fixed cost standpoint, the easiest way is to, if you've got some historic data, you know, probably two or three months, look at those fixed costs, compare those with the number of details that you've been doing, 
that'll give you sort of a per detail cost. If you've broken those details down, uh, which you should have, and if you're not, start doing that, uh, between the types of details, whether you're doing full correction work, you're doing a, a one-step correction, you're doing just exterior engine detailing, interior detailing, that kind of stuff. And if you're doing packages, that makes it a little bit easier because you can apply those numbers and sort of see where that all breaks down. So you end up getting, okay, this is a, this is a per detail and per, let's say, per interior detail cost based on the fixed cost that uh, last month, last couple of months cost me. So that gets you a per detail cost there. For variable cost, it gets a little bit trickier uh, and you can get very, very specific. So um, one option is to go a little bit more general. So you know that last month you ordered you know, X number of bottles of interior cleaner and uh, APC and polish and that kind of stuff. And then you can do that same math that we talked about with the fixed cost. You can get a, a good idea of how much each detail is consuming of those consumable costs. It may require some um, inventorying and that kind of thing. And really what it breaks down to is uh, sort of having some data and that may require you to do a few months at a time so that you can actually see what you're consuming. Uh, there's another way to do it, which is if you want to get really anal about it and uh, you can do stuff like, you know, marking a bottle of interior cleaner that one of your guys uses that you use, do an entire car uh, and then see how much you've used. You can estimate how many ounces of that bottle you use. You know how much that bottle costs, whether you're diluting it, uh, you're buying it straight off the shelf or whatever. So then that can give you a per car cost. Um, of that consumable product. I would even encourage you to say, okay, a big SUV takes this much. Uh, you've got your vehicle inspection forms already so you can see, all right, this level of cleanliness starting versus this level of dirtiness starting will get, will consume this much product. Clearly, if you've got a trashed out leather vehicle, you're gonna use a lot more either APC or interior cleaner uh, to get that number in order to see, or to in order to get that car clean, so that was, will consume more stuff. So, uh, I mean, you can even get really anal with like polishes, you can weigh them beforehand, you can weigh them afterwards, so you can see how much of each one of those you're using. And those cars costs are not insignificant. You know, interior cleaners, expensive. Uh, most, most professional level detailing products are expensive, especially polishes are very expensive, that kind of thing. So there's a big difference between using two ounces of polish uh, on a car and 10 ounces of polish a car. That may make a difference of, I don't know, 10 or 15 bucks per car. And so when you, when you break all that data down and you actually have it in front of you, then that gives you an opportunity to put that together. So obviously we've, we've talked about materials costs, we've talked about fixed costs, a big one is obviously labor costs. Whether or not you have employees or you're just talking about your own labor, you should know what those costs are. Uh, we've already talked about pricing before in a different video. So if it's just you, you're a one-man shop, one-woman shop, you can sort of know, okay, well, these are my labor costs based on what I want to make. Uh, you've got taxes figured in, payroll figured in, uh, administrative costs figured in, workman's comp insurance figured in, uh, disability insurance, all of those things will figure into your labor costs. So again, get your Excel spreadsheet out, start putting these things down, do some Google research and make sure you include everything that you need to include. Uh, if you have employees, you know, like I said, there's a difference between sort of the one man shop versus yourself uh, or, and yourself versus doing uh, employees. And so uh, it's actually a little bit easier if you're an employee because you know, okay, I pay this guy 15, $20 an hour it takes him 45 minutes to do this activity. Um, so I know, you know, multiply that out and I and I know what my costs are for all the insurance and, and all of those things that we just talked about. And you can apply that to that specific detail and see, all right, a per minute cost almost to come up with the cost for that detail. And then you just multiply that out. So then you take your variable cost, your fixed, uh, your fixed cost, your labor cost, uh, then you have stuff like marketing and advertising and customer acquisition. That's all marketing and advertising. But customer acquisition costs, which is a whole other animal, and you're talking about um, you know, how you actually get customers to buy your services. And so that comes into play. So my encouragement is really to know, grab all of the data. Make yourself an Excel spreadsheet, uh, Office, Open Office, Google Docs, whatever you want to use, but you need to put all this stuff down so that you can track it and start getting a month by month so that you can really know 
what your margins are, what your profit looks like versus what your gross looks like. So that way you can make sure that you're making money, you're pricing effectively, uh, you're controlling your costs effectively, and really running the business the way that you need to. Because you know it doesn't really matter what you're saying on the forums, what you think you're making. If you don't know your numbers, you really don't know Jack. That's what we've been talking about. So I hope that helps. I hope that you can, I know it's daunting. You can sort of uh, get lost in the data, but just take it one step at a time. Even if it's a very basic, all right, I know that I pay my guys this much per hour. I know that it costs about this much. I know I ordered this many dollars worth of equipment, uh, or excuse me, this much polish, this much cleaner last month. I know I did this many cars. That'll at least get you started. Then you can start refining that data so that you really have a true understanding of what your margins are per detail, per type of detail. Specifically, uh, you can break it down by month, you can break it down by day of the week, and you can really start using that data um, to define how you run your business, to define the decisions that you're making, uh, and really do a much better job with building your business and continuing to change how you run your business so you can maximize your profit. Because it doesn't matter if you're making $100,000 a year, if you're spending $110,000 a year. So uh, I hope that helps. I hope that you guys understand that. Feel free to comment and uh, or ask me questions. Message me on Facebook. You can find me at Detailers Helper on Facebook. I'm also in my Business 101 group. Detailing Business for Profit, uh, Detailing for Profit, which is another group that I'm in. So you can find me out there, ask me questions, ask other pros uh, questions, and really get the information you need to know. I'd encourage you to sub uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel. I'm continuing to put these videos out, and uh, hopefully they help. They, I'm trying to feed into your business and, and help you guys do uh, more with them. So if you're not already a customer of Detailers Helper and you don't have a tool belt, I would seriously encourage you to go check things out over there. We've done some refinements on the belts. We've done some refinements on our purchasing process. And I know 100% for a fact that the belt will help you make more money. It saves a lot of time. And when you save time and you're more efficient, you can make more money. So go to www.detailershelper.com and check that out. I appreciate your time. I appreciate all your support and all your comments. I'm Kevin Davis for Detailers Helper, doing what I do so you can do what you do better. Thanks a lot.